Hi, my name is Officer Nolan. I'm a university police officer with the New York State University Police here at UAlbany. I'm sure you guys have seen me around campus, and what I'm here to talk to you about today is police use of force, especially in light of some of the things we've seen happen around the country. We wanted to give you guys a video to give you kind of an idea of what it is that police officers do and what standards we have to follow when it comes to using force. The first case I want to talk about is Tennessee versus Garner. Uh, basically, prior to this, a police officer was authorized to shoot a fleeing felon just because they were a fleeing felon. Uh, when this case came around, a uh, police officer did just that, and the Supreme Court said, no, no longer is that allowed. Uh, the police can only use deadly force on a fleeing felon when there's probable cause to believe that that person is a danger to the police officer or to the public, uh, meaning that that person actually poses a physical danger to someone. Um, it's no longer sufficient just that they committed a crime. Uh, Graham v. Connor is the other big case, and this, this talks more to general use of force, not just deadly force. Uh, when police officers are using force in any action, whether it's arresting a suspect, whether it's actually responding to shots fired, they're going to be using the standard under Graham v. Connor to evaluate that police officer's behavior. This is evaluated under the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution and also under New York State's analog in its own constitution. And basically, it's in a reasonableness test. Um, this test is based on the officer's actions. It's an objective test, and it's based on the objectiveness of an objective police officer under those circumstances. It is a balancing test, meaning that basically the intrusion against your rights is balanced against the government interest in making that seizure. And a seizure is not only arresting you, but the courts view using force against you, such as deadly physical force, as a seizure under the Fourth Amendment. These are the grand factors that the courts consider when they're looking at it. Uh, basically, they examine all the facts of every case. Every case is very, very different, and the courts will look at the totality of those cases. But some of the most important factors are the severity of the crime at issue. Are we talking about a larceny? Did somebody's cell phone get stolen? Or are we talking about somebody that just committed a murder? Whether the suspect possesses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, is that person still in possession of a weapon, even if it's a larceny? If, if that person was reported as having a gun or having a knife, those are factors the court's going to look at, because that person with a, with a weapon who just committed a crime is much more dangerous than somebody we have no evidence to have any kind of possession of a weapon. And the last one is whether they're actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. Uh, basically, if somebody is actively resisting a police officer, they're attacking the police officer, they're fighting with them, they've caused injury to another police officer, those are all factors that are going to weigh heavily on the side of the police officer when using force. The courts also recognize that police officers have to make split-second judgments. When evaluating these situations, the courts are sort of sitting in a sterile environment and they recognize that reading what happened on a piece of paper and looking at things after the fact from the safety of a courtroom is completely different than actually being involved in a situation where somebody has just committed a serious crime, somebody's in possession of a weapon, or somebody has used physical force against you. Um, and the court has acknowledged this, that when they are actually looking at the totality of the circumstances, they take this into consideration. So real quick, I just want to thank you guys for watching our video on warrantless search and seizure and use of force. Look at ATV and UPD's website for any further videos that we're probably going to be doing in the future and any videos that we've done. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to give a special thanks to Officer Santa Maria and ATV for filming this. Um, and anytime you guys have any questions, Officer Cole is a graduate of Cooley Law. She's been a police officer for a couple years now. I am currently a law student in my second year, and I've been a police officer for almost six years. So if you guys have any questions, if you want to come in and talk to us about any of these subjects more in depth, feel free to do so. Again, if you guys have any questions, you can come in and talk to us. And if you have an emergency or you need to report a crime, uh, you can always reach the University Police Department at 911 or 442-3131. Thank you.